All right, so the whole reason we factor is so that we can stick it in equations, put everything on one side, factor, set it equal to zero. The zero is very important because some number times another number, now it kind of looks like multiple numbers in here, but a number times a number equals zero. So either x minus 5 has to equal zero, or x plus 2 has to equal zero. One of the two has to equal zero in order for them to multiply to zero. It's called the zero product property. That's the fancy word. But then just set all the parts that are multiplied equal to zero. Add the five over, you get five. Subtract two. And so x equals five, x equals negative two are your two solutions. So say on this one, um, before we factor that we have to set it equal to zero because it only works set equal to zero. Um, so I put the subtracted negative 10x, set it equal to zero, it multiplies to 25, and adds to 10. So 5 and 5, and it's got to be minus. So x minus 5 equals zero. You can write it twice, but it's going to be kind of redundant. x equals 5. Now because it happens twice, um, we call this a solution or we call it a root, and because it happens twice, it's a double root. Um, if you were to look at this graphically, it would come down and be tangent to the x-axis at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, if you were to graph x minus 5 squared, and we already talked about this, but it would look like that. Anything that's tangent like that is a double root. All right. So, c minus 6 squared equals c, so you have to subtract the c out. I'm going to multiply c minus 6 squared, so that's c minus 6 times c minus 6. Do not distribute that squared. So you get c squared minus 6c minus 6c inside outside. Add the 36 and you get c. So let's subtract that other c to get negative 13c plus 36 equals zero. So what adds to 36 and multiplies, or add, sorry, multiplies to 36 adds to negative 13, negative 4, and negative 9. So c equals 9 and c equals 4 because you set each one of these equal to zero. All right, same deal here, except we don't multiply this one out because it's already set equal to zero. This one wasn't set equal to zero, so we had to multiply it out to get it set equal. So here you can say either x squared equals zero, or separately, um, or 2x minus 7 equals zero. Um, you don't have to do the x squared, because when you square it, you're going to get plus or minus when you take the square root of it. So you just get 0, because plus or minus 0 is the same thing. Add the 7, x equals 7 halves. So even over here, you don't need to include the squared. You don't need to write it 2x minus 7 equals 0 twice, because you're just going to get up, end up with the same answer twice. Again, the beauty of it is that it's factored. Multiplied things equal to zero are beautiful. All right, so u to the fourth minus 36u squared equals zero. Now this, first off that we can see is we can pull out a u squared. That's just pulling out the greatest common factor and we're gonna talk about that here in a second again but u squared minus 36 is left. This right here is that difference of squares, something squared minus something squared, and so you can factor it into that plus minus. So u plus 6 and u minus 6. Now, we technically haven't talked about this yet, but it's going to be down here. Something squared minus something squared is always the plus minus because u squared and negative 6u, positive 6u with the outside inside, the inside is going to cancel out. So then either u equals 0 from out front 
u plus 6 equals 0, so u equals negative 6, or u minus 6 equals 0, so u equals positive 6. All right. Next one, 3x cubed equals, let's distribute this and we'll bring it all to the same side, 8x squared minus 4x. You're going to bring everything to the 3x cubed side. So plus 4x and that's going to be equal to 0. I subtracted the 8x and add the 4x. All of these have an x in them. And so I can pull out an x, and we get 3x squared minus 8x plus 4 equals 0. And we can do our AC method. 3 times 4 is 12. What we'll multiplies to 12 and adds to negative 8, so negative 2 and negative 6. You get 3 and 4, but that only gets 7. So the x is out front. 3x squared minus 2x minus 6x plus 4. Pull out an x. 3x minus 2 is left. Pull out a negative 6. Sorry, not a negative 6, a negative 2. A negative 2 and a positive 3x minus 2 is left. So then x times this common 3x minus 2 and x minus 2 equals 0 is left. So then we have x equals 0, x equals add 2, divide by 3, so x equals 2 thirds, and x equals when you add the 2, x equals 2. And there you have it, 3 answers.